Um, it's not quite. <laughs> what a lemon. I'm not sure he can uh, do anything from the side. <laughs> Yeah, it was not very, like, working. It was not working. I think it, it's instincts kick in. He's almost a saying, do it, and um, he's just done it slightly wrong. Come on, mate. Sort yourself out. It's just that he's getting his brain engaged, like getting himself in gear. Um, he, he just needs to work out where exactly he needs to go. Come on, Em, sort him out. A little bit more. Come on. Ah, that didn't work. The old pro has made a schoolboy error, and Emma appears unimpressed. Magadi needs to improve his aim if he's to cement his legacy at Chester. You can get all the uh, factors right. You can get two great sets of genetics. You can get the enclosure down to a T. But at the end of the day, those two individuals have got to be receptive to each other and actually find each other attractive. They've been together for this long and, you know, it's... We've been waiting for the moment and, you know, if, if they just weren't compatible, well, we, we'd be gutted. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that won't happen. Oh, boy. Well, a female rhino, especially in the wild, or, you know, won't want to mate with just any of the first male that comes along, you know. She'll want the fittest specimen. You know, the biggest, strongest, um, to pass on the best genes to her calf. That's, that's the theory. But Melindy is still putting Kifaru through his paces. She's going to basically make him work for her a little bit. It's just not interesting, is she? I think the only way you can win her over is the same technique Fari tries on all the ladies, which is just determination, and hopefully if he just keeps trying, he'll get there in the end. He's still got it in him, he still knows what he needs to do. It doesn't stop him in any way. I'm not sure, um, as far as rhinos go, that he's the best looking of fellas, but, um, you know, he's, he's got other things going for him. He's got persistence. Finally, for Melindy, the time is right. Just goes to show that age is just a number and it doesn't stop them and that you know, just because they're old doesn't mean they need to stop doing what they're doing. Three months from now, the zoo will know for sure if Melindy's pregnant, and the breeding programme of this rare species can claim another success. Can we learn anything from Kifaru? Unfortunately, love trumps hunger in this instance. It's been a good two, three days now since they've eaten. In the wild, they'd go days without food anyway, so this is not a hardship for them by any, you know, means. So they're, they're well able to go a few days and he thinks it's worthwhile. <laughs> He's just very much focused on Gita. He will just stick by her side, focused on her, be aggressive towards anyone or anything that comes near her. For a couple of days now, that's basically all it's going to be about is him being by her side and whenever she gives the green light, mating her. (laughs) 
Once she comes out of season, then we basically have to wait another month to find out if she's pregnant or not. So luckily, you know, cats have a short gestation period like a domestic cat, so you're, you know, you're not looking at too long to find out. Shanto is missing out on family time with his cubs, who are really starting to come into themselves. We've got three happy, healthy cubs, so, you know, there's not much more that you could ask for. These guys will stay with us until they're about two years of age. That's naturally where they would stay with mum. But until then, we just get to enjoy watching them grow up. They were supposed to meet their daddy today, but unfortunately, um, in a cruel twist of fate, he's uh, decided to fall in love with her sister. His stamina wins through eventually. Fortunately for him, she has drawn him into long grass, where he's hidden from his rivals. But even now, she doesn't seem wholly convinced. After all, he weighs over two tons, and the rhino was not designed for copulation. Nonetheless, this balancing act will last hours. Not all matings at Kaziranga are as tortuous. A female hog deer has also come into season. The buck is just as persistent as the rhino bull, but his courtship is rather less exhausting. And the finale is surprisingly brief. Not far from the male's home range, a female has come into estrus. Scent markers in her urine broadcast her willingness to mate. She waits patiently to see who will show up. Lured by her scent, the young male leaves his own home range to seek the pleasure of a female's company. Although she doesn't exactly react with joy to his arrival, The female will be receptive for a few days. If he is to breed with her, he needs to convince her that he's worthy of her attention. Her reluctance may be her way of evaluating his vigor as a male. And while a less dedicated male might give up and try elsewhere, this male is nothing if not persistent. Her hormones encourage his persistence. His strange grimace, called Flemin, is his way of inhaling her hormone-laden scent, which kicks up his sex drive. His persistence is finally rewarded. Copulation lasts less than a minute. He'll stay with her for several days, mating repeatedly, perhaps as many as 50 to 70 times a day.
their mating completed, they manage to squeeze in a moment of domestic tranquility. Uninvolved in courtship, youngsters enjoy some excited playtime. As dominant female, Elar comes into season a few days before the other females. Both sexes play active roles in mongoose courtship. Now Odu takes the lead, sniffing and biting Elar's neck to show how keen he is. He raises his tail as the final signal. Mating normally lasts about five minutes. Some of the youngsters think Ela and Odo are just having a game. They want to join in. This cheeky teenager's calls let them know he's playing. So despite the unwelcome interruption, the adults don't punish him. Leopards seem to underplay their relations with wild dogs. Although they would never take on a whole pack, they might steal in and kill one or two members, especially pups, if they were certain to get away unharmed. But today, the presence of the wild dogs does not concern this pair in the least. The female came into oestrus and she selected a suitable male. As soon as their few days of mating end, they part ways and return to their solitary lives. Little do they realize that their mother, Laduna, is pregnant again. Malu, Kimba, and their five brothers will soon need to think about moving on. Three and a half months ago, Pamwi picked up the smells, telling him the lionesses were ready to mate. He mounted them several times an hour for four days, a sexual marathon. The birth of a new litter will mark a turning point in the lives of Marlu and Kimba. Further along the riverbed, Drifter is also making his mark in his new territory. He and Lila have begun their courtship. She induces mating by presenting herself to him in a crouched position. It's a tense and noisy affair. Lila's in season for seven days, during which they'll mate continuously. If they are successful, Lila will give birth to cubs in just over three months' time. She will spend the next year and a half nurturing them to adulthood. Then, like her, they'll be on their own. December, and the height of the summer will bring new life and death to Mala Mala. Lila and Drifter are nearing the end of their week-long mating marathon.
This is the first time Lila has mated. Now it's time for them both to return to their single lives. It could be two years before she and Drifter meet to mate again. There are several thousand male animals at Chester Zoo. And when it comes to romance, more often than not, it's down to them to make the first move. There is so much competition. The females are looking for the strongest member of the group. And so, yeah, all the males have to really step it up. And yeah, that, that can be tough. But learning how to succeed with the opposite sex doesn't always come naturally. Sometimes it can be a bit cringy watching young males breeding for the first time. Maybe if they don't quite know what they're doing. Sometimes you want to cover your eyes a little bit and just pretend you didn't see anything. But other times it can really be, yes, get in there, son. One young male the zoo has been struggling to breed from is Stomp, a rare 13-year-old Akarpi. Akarpi's, to me, the fussy. I'll have giraffes any day. Hey, Stompy. So far, Stomp has failed to mate with any of the zoo's females. And his most intimate relationships have been with the staff. He's a really friendly Akarpi, so he loves the keepers, he loves being close to you, and he's a bit of a licker, actually. He's quite intense. Hey, mister, we don't want you licking me. Hey. Stomp's tongue is very rough, a bit like sandpaper, very wet, and it's very fast. <laughs> no sooner have you stepped into the pen, you can find that the tongue has just caught you in your ear or around the back of your head or almost full on in the face. Despite their zebra-like stripes, Okapi are the only living relative of the giraffe. Found only in the rainforests of the Congo, they've been hunted for their meat and are now endangered. Good boy. Nice and steady, then. Keep going. To boost numbers, Chester's hoping Stomp will finally breed, and he's about to have his first date with three-year-old Katusha, who's just reached sexual maturity. Katusha is a young animal, never had a partner. She can be sensitive. She can be a loose cannon. One day she can be fine, and then the next day something small can just set her off, so Stomp needs to take it nice and slow with her. But Stomp is out of practice with the opposite sex and has earned a reputation for panicking around females. He's inexperienced, this Stomp. He's clumsy and um, <laughs> he needs a bit of work. Stomp has to be persistent and try and keep calm, especially with a young female. His job to mate her, but she might not be quite ready, then he's, he's got to build up to it gradually. They need to get to know each other first. Uh, I think Stomp is going to have his work cut out. With Katusha coming into season, Stomp will be introduced to her tomorrow. He's ready for his big day. You're all set, aren't you? But he'll have to keep his cool if he's finally going to meet. 